Hello everyone. We've arrived in Ely. Well, we, we spent the night last night right here, uh, right next to the harbour, and we had the lapping tides at high tide lapping across the wall here, which is really nice. We really enjoyed that. We've had a little search around Ely today, and we're, we're going to be heading down to the boats in the distance there. We found a really lovely spot. Um, it's looking this way at the boats, and it's beautiful. So a completely different subject today, but it's going to be really enjoyable and uh, totally different from the previous pictures that I've done. So a close-up of boats. So we'll get on with that. These are the boats that we're going to be painting today, and they are lovely. As you can see, low tide is about now. It's 20 past, in 10 minutes is, is low tide. So we're going to get a bit of a rush on today. But it's quite nice having a little bit of a time, time scale to it because it makes you get on with it. And that's part of the fun of really doing plan air paintings is that you have to get on with it. You, you've got no choice. When you're in a studio, you, you can think about it a bit and have a cup of coffee and all these distractions in the home. But when you're actually outside painting, you've got to get it done. There's a window of about two hours before the light's completely changed and you have to start another picture. So once you start, it's, it's full on. Right here, we're in this massive um, sand bank for the harbour and it's really big. And if Tanya pans round here, you can see how it, how it extends quite a lot here. And in the summertime, they're, 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 they're famous in Ely for playing cricket which is a lot of fun. I have watched it a few times and it's great, great to see it. And that's, uh, that's a lot of fun. I don't know what happens to the, that leather ball though. That must be a mess afterwards, but it is fun watching it. Here we go. This is the place I'm going to start painting. Lovely boats coming up. You've got the reflections of the water coming in. So a nice blue tones there. And you've got these um, chains coming in as well, which are nice points to lead you into the picture. So you can see you're going, following the chains into the picture. So that's going to be a really, really nice, nice uh, composition. Here I am all set up and uh, see it's a lovely scene. I've done a little sketch here but I didn't do a little drawing first on my little uh, A6 pad because I wasn't, there wasn't much to really move around and work out so I wasn't shifting things around so when you shift things around that's when you really need to get a, uh, a sketch done to figure that one out so the scene is, is a simple composition but, not, but complicated so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get all this done. The tides coming in in about an hour and a half, so maybe two hours. So we've got a little bit, little bit of a rush on, but it shouldn't be too bad, but it'll be lovely to do another painting here. There are 20 pictures here that you could do. When you have a complicated picture to paint like this, um, it's really difficult to work out where to start. I don't want to paint the sky first because I want to know where the, the, the masts are going into. Oops. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to start with the boat. Uh, you've got to start somewhere, so I think it's just best to attack it. I decided to start with the blue of the boat, really. It's just something firm that I can actually latch onto. Uh, it's, it's a dramatic part of it, so if I just start here, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. You just have to have that courage in the beginning part of it, because it takes a while for a painting to look right. <laughs> And that's one of the p problems of painting, really. It just, just does take that while to make it look okay. So we've just got to take our heart in our hands and make the first mark. This is the first figure wash here, and that's the, of the sand coming in. So uh, trying to... It, it, there's, a, there's a blueness and there's uh, a yellowness in the sand, so I'm trying to combine the two. So it's really raw umber, uh, sorry, raw sienna, and maybe a little bit of brown and a little bit of ultramarine blue coming in as well. And maybe a bit bright, that bit. That's way too bright. So that's where the bluing or browning effects need to, need to happen. So you need to learn how to tone colours down. 
by adding other colours. So maybe a bit of brown on it would make it a little, little less bright. Get my bigger brush out. Use my mop again for these bigger washes. I find that the best way. And again, not trying to be too careful at the beginning parts. I'm really just trying to get, get the main colours down and change the colours. If you can see that, there's, there's a bit of variety there. I'm changing it from a yellow to a browner to a bluer all the time. Again, changing the colour. We've got the water coming in on the left, on the right here, so we need to keep it a little bit bluer, perhaps, on the right. Okay, that's a nice. I like that. That's a really nice colour. That blueness coming in has helped it. That's good. I'm going to paint the whiteness of the boats now. They're, they're not, I don't want to paint it completely white. I want to give a little bit of different colours in there. So, so just a various little bit. It, it, they are very white, but maybe it curves around a little bit here just to knock that white down a bit. Even lighter than that around the back. Change to my number 14 brush, the Raphael brush. So complicated, but I, I, I want to I want to paint it in a not complicated way. I, I still want to paint it in a broad way, not trying to paint too much detail, but give an airy feel to the picture. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to paint some of the little boys in on the side of the boat. Just trying to find some places that I can really make a, a dramatic uh, step in the picture, um, just so that I've, I've got something for it to base itself on so I can work around it. So the, the boats are the secret. I've added a few more washes to the front. Which are okay. They have a very subtle, the very subtle little um, um, buoys on the side of the boat that I've got to get in. There we go. I'm just using a little, little small brush at the moment. It's lots of little details that I have to put in here. But I don't want to go too much. It's always the big problem with, uh, with, with painting detail is that there's a, there's a knife edge, really. Um, and if you, go, if you go one side of the uh, knife edge, it looks like it's a photograph. And then if you go the other side of the knife edge, it looks like a child's done it. So you want to stay right in the middle of this, this impressionistic point of view. So you don't do too much detail, but it's not so simple that it feels like anyone could have done it. Just getting the little brush involved with the small bits underneath the boat, trying to give it the shape of the keels. Okay, it's quite an interesting brush, and what's quite fun about it, you can use a flat mark, and you can use you can turn it and do a, a thin mark. So I quite like a little brush. It's, I think it came with a, you know, it was a cheap, cheap set that my children had got. But I thought, oh, that's quite an interesting brush. So I use that. You don't always have to have expensive brushes. As long as it does the job that you want it to do. Right, I'm thinking about the sky now, just to block that in. Now, the masks that are, at, uh, that are there, they're sort of silver, but they don't have the contrast that I quite like to have with the sky. So I'm, I'm going to make them more of an old-fashioned mask, like a, a wooden mask, just so that it gives a warm colour against a cool colour and hopefully improve it that way. So just a quick... So if you can understand that. So it, it's, when, when I put the, the um, uh, sky in the background, it's going to give it a little bit of a contrast. And again, this one here. Straight down. If, if I were to paint it, it, the, other, the other mask silver, you wouldn't see it against the blue of the sky. So sometimes you need to change it just to, just to improve the painting, but I, I think that's going to help it. I'm going to paint the house in the background. It's quite a pretty house. No white houses around here. <laughs> a, a roof in. And these again will be impressionistically done. Go. and then it's got a, a wall that goes down 
into the into the sides. Okay, what I'm going to do now is give the the shadow of the boats as it as it from on onto the sands. So this will make it a lot more dramatic. So the darkness coming into it. Just trying to get the shape of the boat. Oh, it's my hat falling off. The shadows coming across. Dark aspects underneath the boats. It's a very sunny day today, so. Just trying to get the shape of the boat a little bit. As it. So that's that's what's producing the drama today. These wonderful shadows. I'm just going to put the front sail of the boats now, and I'm just trying to work out what colour to make them. If I make them an ultramarine blue, and, and because the sky is going to be cobalt blue, so just to just to contrast it a bit. So there's a, a mast that comes up. So I'll aim it for about there, going up here like that. And again in the one next to it. So if I make the ultramarine blue again, and I'll start it here. So we have to be quite bold, work out exactly the line you're going to take, and it's going to go to there. Yeah, that's nice. And I'll work on the other one as well quickly. So there's a sail behind. So I'll place that in. I'm going to put the uh, ropes in now, as they're, they're going to give a lot of leading lines into the picture. So one starts here. Fortunately, the light's a bit bright for you to see it. I'll try and come this way and then across. Lots of them, lots of them coming in. And I'm going to try and make them lead around the corner, perhaps, and sort of snake in. As they are moving in all sorts of different directions. And then there's one at the back coming in. Another one further behind. So they're, they're snaking their way around, really. In here. Gives a sense of leading lines. If you can, if you can, in your paintings, have um, a line that takes you into the picture, that's a really good compositional aid. And see if you see these, how these really do take you into the into the drawing and into, into the painting. Just leading into the distance. See how that goes. You go. You start following the lines into the picture, and it's a really good trick for uh, composition. Again, you want to vary the colour of the chain. So I first started off with a raw umber or yellow ochre colour and now I've moved into a cerulean blue colour. So trying to get those coming in again. Uh, maybe going around the corner. Give it look, make it look like a chain. And these chains are quite thick so I'm going to add a, maybe add a shadowy side to it as well. Anyway, that's a bit drier. I'll put that in. And you've got the water coming in in little angles. Yeah, the cables, the lines for this boat now, quite thick ones. See it into the distance. That was a ultra or a cobalt blue one. Uh, they're quite yellowed because of all the algae that's on them, seaweed. There's actually two of them, so I'll make that a bit brighter. What I'm going to do now is the wash of the sky. Um, so that'll bring the, the colour, make it much richer. So again, it's cobalt blue. And it starts very, very dark at the top, and then it grades down to a lighter shade. And I always like to add a little bit more green into, into the lighter shades at the bottom of it. Right, okay, so I'm going to paint and leave the gaps of these masts. I'm not going to paint over the masts. I'm going to paint around them if I can. Okay. 
So I'll leave them separate. I quite like leaving sort of silhouettes of, of masts. It's a very blue sky, so there's not a cloud in the sky today. So I'm, I might add a little bit of cloud just to give it that variation. See how it's filling it up now. Bringing the scene together. So normally I'd, as I say, I'm, as you've seen in previous videos, I'd, I'd start with the top, but in this picture, I didn't think so. I didn't think that was the right way to start it. Because of, because of the, the, um, the masts, they, they need to come in, um, that you need to paint around those. So if, if I'd painted the masts in over the blue, I wouldn't have got the same sort of interesting effect that I've got. Okay, so add a little bit of um, viridian to it. And that just changes the color a bit. That's nice. Okay, so I've left a few little patches. I don't know whether you can see the little patches of um, light on the in the sky. So I've imagined there's a there's a cloud there. So uh, again, imagination is the key. You're trying to compose a picture, and I, I've I've learnt uh, with my painting that I'm I'm not a topographer. A, a topographer is somebody who makes maps and they they paint thing as they are because that's what they got to do. I'm a picture maker, and the two are different things. When you're, a, when you're a picture maker, you, you, you try and design a nice picture out of it. You're not interested in complete truth. You're interested in making it more interesting. As you can see now, the sky's in and what a change. It's, it's completely altered the painting. There's, it's, it's, it's turned it into something else. In the, I'm just to, going to give the, the mast a little bit of a shadow on that one side just to bring it out a little bit more, give it a bit of solidity to it. So it's very important to get at least some of the um, values in just to give it a little bit of shape. Remember, it's light and shade which gives something shape to it, a dark side, a middle tone and a light to it. Great, I think it's coming together now. Just going to give a little bit of details of the, the shadows of the railings of the boat. See that? So uh, there's some railings on the boat here. So those are the railings, the shadow of the railings there. And then also the, the shadow of the, the lines coming in. So these lines, they cast a shadow as well. Yeah, but I'm going to make, make those shadows a little bit bluer. Remember, shadows are blue. So any, anything that, that feels like a shadow, I've, I've got a tendency to make them blue. And then we've got that back going around there. And the shadows around the boat are quite helpful because they, they, they provide um, the roundness of the boat. You can sort of follow the line of the shadow and that creates the, um, the shape of the boat coming in. So I'm imagining those, those, that's the shadow of the mast coming from over that side. And, and then you have, I've got the blue, a blue bit here of the pattern of the boat. Again, that side too. There's a red bit there. And then looking through the window here, give that a little bit of color. And then the mast, it's just finishing off a few of the details, but it's very important to know when to stop with the painting. It, the paintings, if you overdo it, then you, you lose that sense of impressionism with it. So it's almost over now. I, 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 I look at it and I say, well, if I made more marks, will it, will it be better? And mainly, no, it won't be better. This is the last stage of the actual painting of the picture is the white paint. So I'm just trying to introduce a little bit of color, just a splash of color here and there. After all, I, I love the idea of impressionist painting. And this is what we're trying to do. Always trying to make the painting more impressionistic. I, I think, what, what I enjoy about the impressionistic side is that when you look at it, and particularly when you look close up to it, it there's nothing there. Then when you look up at one spot, there's nothing there. But when you draw back from the painting, suddenly the picture appears and you can see what's happening. 
And I find that's the magical part of impression, impressionistic painting. Okay, just the last bits of pen, pencil work now. Difficult for you to see, the sun's right in the wrong spot to show this. Uh, it, it's a lovely little line. There's so much rigging coming into, the, into these things. Just to bring it out a bit and finish it off nicely. Maybe a few marks on the sand as well. And here we have the finished painting. Uh, very impressionistically done. I enjoy the way that I put the masts in and I'm, I'm very pleased I didn't paint the sky first and that I painted the sky over the mast or around the mast. So I was quite pleased with that. And all together it turned out quite nicely and I'll go back now to the scene so you can have a look at that. And there we have it. There's the picture for you. Here we are, this is the finished painting. It's worked out quite nicely, I'm quite pleased with it. And it's in a stunning location, uh, one of the nicest locations near where I live in Ely. And uh, it's 20 by 14 inches, so a good size. Uh, easier to do than the big paintings and less, less to worry about. And you, you can get them done a little bit faster. We do have a speed element here coming in here because the tide is just coming in. So we, we had to get it done pretty quickly which is one of the reasons I chose a smaller painting, which I've enjoyed doing. I really love, I really love this, uh, this size and I love the boats as well. The boats are wonderful things to paint. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Or maybe a thumbs up. And if you can give a comment, that would be even better. I love, love replying to the comments and trying to help you out with any question you've got. And uh, until next time, thanks very much and goodbye.